Hi and welcome to the video lecture series on thin film flow modeling and simulation in the course M7033T Scientific Computing with Applications in Tribology. My name is Andreas Altius and I work in the Division of Machine Elements here at Lulio University of Technology. Now this is the second part of the second video lecture on the introduction and underlying theory and here uh, we will derive the classical Reynolds equation. So let us start with a small recap on the reduced set of equations. So we saw that in the case of an incompressible and isoviscous fluid and with the ratio epsilon between uh, the, the, the reference parameter in height h0 and the reference parameter in length l0 and under the scaling then uh, we were able to reduce the balance of the linear momentum equation to this parameter-free, very simplified uh, set of equations when we neglected terms smaller than epsilon squared. And we also saw that the continuity equation became precisely this one, very simple, the divergence of the dimensionless viscosity uh, velocity equals zero. Now, this system has dp dz equals zero and dp dx is still preserved, um, and uh, in dimensional form, we can present the system like this. So we have first the continuity equation which is, which is just the divergence of the velocity and then uh, we have the x momentum equation which is very simple and we have the z momentum equation under this scale. Moreover since the pdz is zero we can actually exclude that from the equation and we have p is a function of x and t only, which means that it, this system can be integrated, uh, resulting in the classical dimension reduced Reynolds equation, which we will also find later on in this video. Okay, let's start by integrating the x momentum equation with respect to z twice. So first integration is just c times the uh, gradient of p over uh, mu a plus an additional integration constant with respect to z, so a function of x and t only. One more integration yields a quadratic polynomial in z for you with two integration functions are constant with respect to z. These are a and b here. Now by incorporating the boundary conditions 
which uh, are u1 for the lower boundary and u2 for the upper boundary at the uh, h, the separation between the surfaces, also known as the film thickness or clearance. Uh, these are also known as no slip conditions, so the fluid sticks perfectly and are dragged along with the surface with the speed of the surface. Uh, by means of the boundary condition we can determine A and B and we get a closed form expression for the velocity in the x direction looking like this. Okay, so we continue now with the derivation of the Reynolds equation. And Osborne Reynolds originally obtained this uh, dimension reduced equation directly from the continuity equation. By integration, so by integrating the continuity equation from zero to the full clearance h of x and t with respect to z, uh, we can easily switch order between differentiation and integration and we obtain the expression on the right hand side where we already have integrated the second term very conveniently as dw dz which integrates with respect to z just to w and then in, by inserting the boundaries the integration boundaries. Uh, now these boundary conditions for the velocity in the z direction they are given by the h dt because it is the change in the clearance with time uh, that uh, causes this difference between w at the upper boundary and w at the lower boundary. So it is actually, if you like, a, a difference between the derivative of the shape of the upper surface minus the shape of the lower surface. And these are denoted here by hu and hl. So with the expression with this and with the expression for u, which we obtained previously by integrating the simplified Navy Stokes momentum equations, we get this equation, which is exactly the Reynolds equation in one dimension governing time-dependent flow of incompressible and isoviscous fluids. In 3D, we start from the continuity equation, which has one additional term, of course, but it's just the divergence of V. And uh, in, in 3D, the simplified reduced balance of linear momentum equation is just the gradient of P equals mu times the second derivative of the velocity with respect to z, but this is a vector valued function, so it's two equations really. This means that the velocity in vector form is just given by the second degree polynomial in z, where we have the gradient of p and we have the boundary velocities instead of just the scalar value for the, the pressure derivative in the x direction and the boundary uh, velocities in, in the, the x direction. And then by integrating this continuity equation uh, with respect to h we obtain the Reynolds equation in 2D governing non-steady flow of isoviscous and incompressible fluids. So for 3D flow we have a 2D 
Reynolds equation, a dimension reduced model for the thin film flow. Presented here in a component form and uh, this is second order uh, partial differential equation in terms of the fluid pressure which is also of most of referred to as the hydrodynamic pressure P but as we've seen it's the mechanical pressure from our previous analysis so a unique solution requires specification of the boundary conditions as well as an initial condition and typically we know the pressure at the boundaries meaning that the boundary conditions are of Dirichlet type and when we have the solution to the Reynolds equation in terms of the pressure we can compute the load carrying capacity or film thickness dependent on how we pose the problem uh, we can compute the velocity field we can compute mass flow and shear stresses inside the lubricant film etc and all these are valuable uh, characteristics when designing uh, slider bearings for example in the literature there is frequently found an alternative derivation of the Reynolds equation which just is based on that the fluid must be viscous and that the fluid's rheology is Newtonian described by its viscosity and density uh, and then uh, the velocity field defines the mass flow as we have also done now just by integrating actually the, the density times the velocity uh, over the gap height that's the mass flow if you just integrate the velocity it's the volume flow uh, and this is uh, uh, this derivation may be found in other YouTube videos uh, two of them by the LTU professor Roland Larson and part one part two here with shortened URLs for you to just pause this video and key in this in the browser window and you can find this uh, alternative der derivation uh, in those okay so that the fluid rheology is Newtonian in 1D it means that the shear stress must be proportional to the shear rate and the uh, and the shear rate is du dz and then the constant of proportionality is the dynamic dynamic viscosity here denoted by mu so as soon as we have u we can integrate and find the mass flow and this will be very useful because the Reynolds equation is just the continuity equation stating that the mass flow is constant so if we have found u we can integrate and get the mass flow and then we can pose the Reynolds equation by means of that so to obtain the velocity field we need actually a, a force equilibrium for a fluid particle and that force equilibrium turns out to be just the derivative with uh, respect to z of the shear stress must be equal to the derivative with respect to x of the pressure this will give us the velocity field okay so now you have an exercise to do and I want you to show that by integrating raw u the product rho times u from zero to the height of the gap h um, you will obtain the following expression for the mass flow so it's just a recap of quite easy integration but see that you do that and then when you have you can formulate the Reynolds equation by just taking the derivative 
of the mass flow and posing that this must be zero so we have we have a constant mass flow at every position x this will then give you the Reynolds equation as we can see here it explicitly formulated so this is the Reynolds equation now in 1d in governing steady flow the lower dimensional 2D Reynolds equation for 3D flow may also be formulated in conservation form as seen here. The time derivative of H can be understood or interpreted as the accumulation of volume in the system. So when H changes, it either uh, increases the volume or decreases the volume. And the divergence term is just the difference in volume flow in versus volume flow out. And Q here is the volume flow given by this expression here in vector form. Before we finish here, we will derive the said velocity component. And indeed, by the continuity equation, we get an expression for the derivative of w with respect to z and it is easily obtained from what we had already derived by u so here you can see the expression which is also easily integrated with respect to z and we obtain an expression for w which now contains an integration constant c that we have to determine by means of the boundary condition and let us now use the boundary condition at the lower surface here, Z0, and then we know that W of Z0 zero is 0, meaning that uh, C of XT is identical to 0, and we have a closed form expression for W. So with c equals 0, we now have this expression for w. But it's not as easily seen, maybe, that this also satisfies the boundary condition at the upper surface, which reads that the velocity component w must equal the time derivative of h at the upper surface. So let us then explore whether it's fulfilled or not. Indeed, if we insert z equal h in the expression above for w, we obtain exactly this expression and we can equate it against the h dt. And I believe that some of you now have already realized that this expression is equivalent with this one, which is exactly the Reynolds equation posed in mass conservation form. Therefore, we have shown that the velocity component in the z-direction is precisely given by the expression uh, below here, the second component of the velocity field, and from before we had the velocity component in the x direction. So when we have solved the Reynolds equation, we have p <coughs> and we have the p dx, and therefore we can equate the velocity field by means of this uh, vector valued function.